So what I have here is something that represents a piece of wire with a charge carrier in it. And uh, it's not going to have any kind of flow in one direction or the other because there's no difference in the electrical potential at each end. However, if I make perhaps one side positive and the other side negative, uh, and then this uh, figure here is going to represent the conventional current. The conventional current is a flow of these charged particles, and in this case it's going to move from positive to negative. Now inside the battery we have various chemicals here and what they do is they cause a difference in the electrical potential between one end and the other. And if we connect this up into a complete circuit, what we tend to do then is have a different electrical potential at each end and therefore we have the flow of charged particles which means we have a flow of current. So here we have a very simple circuit and what we have is the terminals, we have the positive and the negative and by convention we have current that goes from positive to negative, so that's conventional current. Now this is our source of energy and what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the energy with these uh, little yellow blocks here and uh, effectively inside the cell we have some chemical energy so I'm going to leave that there. Now this is a bit of a dull circuit at the moment so I'm also going to add uh, some kind of components and here we have a filament lamp okay it's not quite perfect but it's uh, it's all I could do in Lego. So what we're going to look at is if we have this very simple circuit effectively a cell and a light we're going to look at this flow of energy and where it goes in that circuit. So we have this store of energy at the cell and over time, provided there's a current flowing, this energy is going to be transferred around the circuit and it's going to be emitted at the light that we have down here at the bottom. And in order for this energy to be transferred, what we need are these uh, charged particles. And effectively what they do is, as they leave the cell, they pick up a small amount of energy and the charged particles move, and this is then the electric current. And as they move around, they transfer this energy from one point in the circuit to another. When they get to the cell, what they do is they release the energy and then they keep on moving. So the green man here is uh, a bit like the electric current, moving around the circuit. As it goes past the cell again, it's going to maybe pick up a bit more energy. And obviously you can see this analogy isn't perfect, but effectively what these do is this current is going to move around and it's going to transfer energy from one place to another in that circuit. So what we have across the cell is an EMF. Now an EMF, uh, which stands for the electromotive force, even though it's not actually a force, um, this is the amount of energy transferred from chemical energy into electrical energy per unit charge. And uh, this often has a symbol capital E, or sometimes it's also uh, sort of like a, a curly E or an epsilon. And the units for this are the volt. So EMF is the energy per unit charge transferred from chemical energy into electrical energy. So as this uh, flow of charged particles per unit time or a current flows around the circuit, uh, what happens is they then release their energy when they get to a component. Now uh, this charged particle is going to transfer its energy from electrical energy into other forms and it does it across this component. And what happens is the energy is emitted and what we have now is the potential difference. Now the potential difference is the energy transferred per unit charge from electrical energy into other forms of energy. And here we have that potential difference. Now the important thing to note is that this charged particle will keep moving around the circuit. And if we think about Kirchhoff's first law, we can say that the current at any point in this circuit is going to be the same because we just have this very simple basic uh, series circuit. So this is one kind of analogy that you can use to maybe think about what's happening in the circuit. As the charged particles move from uh, the one terminal of the cell to the other, they're moving around the circuit. And this, this flow of charged particles here, which is the electric current, what they're doing is they're picking up energy at uh, the cell or the power source and it's been converted from chemical into electrical and therefore we have a source of EMF. As it moves around the circuit, when it gets to a component, it releases that energy and it transfers it from electrical into other forms and therefore we have a potential difference across that component. There's going to be a difference in the electrical potential between this side and this side of, in this case, a filament lamp. Now, the current will still flow, the charges still move around the circuit, but what they're doing is they're transferring energy from one place to another. So how do we measure the potential difference? Well, what we can use is a voltmeter. Now, a voltmeter must go in parallel with the component we're measuring, because effectively what we want to do is look at the difference between the electrical potential here in the circuit and over here. And we do that with a voltmeter, which has this symbol here, 
And the important thing about a voltmeter is it must go in parallel. And in order for it to basically to have no part in the circuit, it must have a very high resistance. The reason for this is we don't want the current to be basically flowing uh, in and uh, through this component. We want all the current to be going through this component. And therefore we kind of block off the, uh, the current going through this with a very high resistance. So this voltmeter will go across a component in order to measure the potential difference. And again, we measure the potential difference in volts, pretty, pretty obvious from here. And this is very different to an ammeter. An ammeter goes in series and it's measuring the current through a position, whereas a voltmeter is measuring the difference in the electrical potential across that component. So just to summarise, then, what's the difference between EMF uh, and potential difference? Well, although they're both measured in volts, uh, the EMF is if we think about the energy, it's going to be the energy per unit charge that's transferred from chemical to electrical. Whereas on the other hand, the potential difference is the energy transferred per unit charge from this electrical energy into other forms. So that's it, the difference between EMF and PD. And just think about it in terms of the energy per unit charge and how the energy is transferred from either one form to another.